So what I want to be talking with you today, so first of all, I want to tell you where are we with OpenAPI so far in terms of current usages and tools, and then uh, go a little bit further in terms of what can we do with OpenAPI at runtime in terms of use cases and API gateway support, and what can we do better? And this is coming uh, from a personal experience I had not that many time ago, and I decided to, you know, let's, let's craft an experience and let's share with everybody. And hopefully with a live demo, but for the world, I tried half an hour ago and it wasn't working. And, you know, but takeaways and questions will, will be there in any case. Um, just no more than 10 words about me. My name is Vincenzo Ghanese, and although I'm wearing this fancy uh, dress, I promise you that I am a software developer at Stoplight. Uh, this was work for my parents, they wanted to. And um, Stoplight, in case you don't know, it's a, it's a company based in Texas and develops tools for API developers. So if you ever had to craft, craft in a web API, we can take care uh, from having an idea to getting, to getting an API done. Uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, I'm also the maintainer of Express Gateway, and actually I was last year in this conference presenting the project. It's an open source API gateway written in JavaScript, running on Node and on Chakra. Uh, in case you're interested, hit me up. Uh, I am an Auth0 ambassador. It's basically an hour that this company is giving, you, giving to the people that are interested in security and proving the things on the field. And last one, I promise, uh, last week I've been awarded by Google as a developer expert in web technologies. Uh, those are my references if you want to hit me up. Uh, website, email, um, Twitter, whatever you want. The handle is here and it's going to be there for the whole time. Okay, let's jump into the content. So, uh, you know, so far with all... In, so far with OpenAPI, uh, we are used to see that thing as a tool for designing an API. And even if you go on the official repository, it's telling, you know, the OpenAPI specification is a standard to define interface description, or, you know, you can use it to code generation, documentation, client server, and so on and so forth. This is coming from the official um, Open API repository, which is, which is, is, it is actually true. So interactive documentation, the idea is that you give this file to a platform, and it can be Stoplight, for example, but there are alternatives, um, you know. And this platform is going to, again, transform this file into a documentation that you can give to your customer. So you have table of content. Uh, you can see the request and the response of how it's going to look like. You have an online client to test this thing out. You have a linting, which is telling if something is going wrong with the definition itself. You can search into client generation and, and all, those, all this good stuff. But then another use case that we are used to see is the code generation. So, you know, I'm giving you this open API file and a service is going to give me a client that I can use in my application. It can be Node, it can be Java, so on and so forth. And there are advantages because, for example, with a single function, uh, the client is taking care of the base URL and of the authentication mechanism. I just didn't need to give you the API key and everything is sorted out. Or also, it's mapping URLs on the HTTP level to actions in the client. So I need to do clients, pet.create, and it's way more easy and it's mapping the parameters. So in this case, I don't even know if age is a query parameter or if, if it's a body parameter. I don't care, the client is gonna take care of that for me. And if the logic is changing, I update the client, it's all sorted out. And it is providing a standard interface for success and failure. So I don't know if 500 is a failure for you, maybe for somebody it is, maybe for somebody it's not. The client is taking care of this logic. So that's another use case that so far has been extremely successful, client generation. And also, you know, automation of test cases. So you have an API, an API, an open API document on the web, you're providing an update of your API, and, and you want to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, your implementation is in line with the open API specification. So you can have the schema validation, how much of your open API file you're covering, um, and so on and so forth. That's yet another use case. Um, and then you also get linting. For example, you know, best practices when writing an API. For example, make sure that all your sources are plural, which is totally legit. Or also make sure that all your responses are correct responses are 200 or 201, one of those use cases, uh, and business rules. 
uh, and actually just an announcement in case you're interested, we at Stoplight have just open source at Spectral. It's an open source linting engine, which is able to take an open API file, actually it's a little bit more generic, and uh, telling you what might be wrong in your open API. And you can also uh, kind of um, extend with your business rules that make sense for your organization. And it's completely open source, it actually was open sourced yesterday on Monday. You can find the repository here. I invite you to check it out. Uh, that can add a lot of value in case you, know, you have a lot of APIs and you want to make sure that all of those are respecting some base criteria that you think make sense for your, for your company in general. So check it out if you want. And, but what, I've been ask, what I was asking myself lately was, you know, all those use cases that we saw here are before the API is deployed. Documentation, it's something not related with running the API. Linting is something that is happening before. The testing is obviously happening before. But what about, what about the runtime? I've been thinking and asking myself, what can I do with the open API document at runtime? What can I do with that? And we're starting to look a little bit around. And today, what I've been able to find uh, were no more than three use cases. I may be wrong, but that's what I found so far monitoring, usage statistic, and analysis with feedback collection. That's what I've been finding so far. Uh, in particular, the, the general use case for OpenAPI at runtime is that, you know, you have a user and you have your server on the right. So the user is using your client that are providing client.pets.list, and then the client internally is transforming this thing into an HTTP request, which is hitting your server, and then the server is using the open API document to validate the request and store statistics. And in this way, you can know, for example, what are the most used endpoints. That's one thing. Or also, for example, if there is a particular set of endpoints which are being hit always in the same order, and that represents a scenario that you, you may want to reason about. Also, you, know, you can see if what are the most failing endpoints. Like there is an endpoint in particular in my API where 99% of the time the payload is wrong. And uh, with such information, maybe you can identify that it's not well documented and people go get in trouble because they don't understand what to do with the API. So that's a really valuable thing that you can have. And again, most common scenarios. Uh, there are companies that are doing this. Uh, you know, they are checking out the API usages using the open API document as a source of truth. But again, that was not what I was looking for. Uh, me, as a, as a DevOps, I, mean, I was, I was imperson um, impersonating a DevOps, and there are things that I want to do based on an open API specification. For example, let's say I am creating a new API, a new part of the API. In the example here, let's say, you know, you have a pets API and you're gonna open to the pets food. You wanna send food to pets and you're opening a new section of the API. So a series of endpoints that can be used. Um, or set an API section as deprecated that you should not use that thing anymore. Or you wanna change security requirements. Let's say that you have an event in particular and you wanna make your API public for a limited period of time. Or you wanna change the validation rules. Let's say that a field that previously was mandatory, now it is not anymore, or redirects. If you have a look to all those use cases, there is a disconnection between the open API document and the runtime. Because you, know, you update the open API document with this information, but then there is another manual step that you have to do into your code to make this thing happen, right? It's, it is not automated. And I think this is a pain. I felt this pain in particular, and I'm not an, a, a DevOps person at all. I was just playing around with some stuff and I said, why do I need to do that every single time? Why there is a disconnection between this and the open API document? If, you know, so far the open API and RAML API blueprint in general, the API description document have, have been advertised as the single source of truth. It's not the case yet, especially in the runtime part, at least in my opinion so far. And uh, then I said, okay, uh, Let's see if there is, a, if there is a, a solution or something that we can do. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not by chance, but given that I authored an API gateway, I said, you know, you have this layer of indirection between the client and your server, which maybe can help during the journey. And I said, maybe this is the solution because 
The API Gateway, although they can do a lot of things, they have a limited configuration surface. They, most of the times, that's not always the case, but in particular, in case of a public API, what the API Gateway is exposing is exactly what you advertise in, the, in an open API document that you give to your customer and you give the documentation. So I've said, yeah, maybe there is something we can do. And some solution, not all of them, can be declarative configured. So it means that you don't have to spin up an instance and start making requests or providing or writing some code. You can just give a configuration file, which is going to be parsed, and the, the gateway works. And given that the open API specification, it's a declarative way to give you your API, I said, yeah, there is yet another connection. Again, not all, not all the, the API gateways are declarative. Express Gateway is on purpose. And then I said, okay, let's see if we, we can do something. But before, before you know, trying out the things, I said I want to review the, the other solutions because I'm quite sure in those big companies there are people way smarter than me that maybe had the same issue that I was having. So I went to AWS API Gateway and I noticed that yes, they do have OpenAPI 2 support. They announced that Open, they released OpenAPI 3 support this September. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working correctly yet. Uh, I mean, uh, and, and it's fair enough. Like, uh, I, I wish I would be able to release a solution with so few bugs, honestly. So <coughs> it, it is not working yet, but uh, it's on the roadmap. It's, it's going to be a thing. They have proprietary extension to, to this case, I mean, to configure the API gateway in a way that the open API document is not able to express. And that's the first check mark that I said. Like, there is something that an open API document can do for an API gateway. But what I noticed that is that they don't have kind of a document upload API. So if I have a, C, a CI CD integration and I'm making some changes, there is no way that I can propagate the changes into AWS in a programmatic way. I need to go to the website and click a browse and give the file, upload. So again, they do support the things, but there is no an automation opportunity. So there is a disconnection. And I may be wrong. If somebody is working for Amazon and I'm wrong, shut it out. It's fine. I will. But so far, that's what I found. So first solution, it's not going to work. Then I went to Axway API Gateway. I had, I had a look to this one too. And they have OpenAPI to support. They don't have any custom extension. And they do have a public API for configuration. But they don't support OpenAPI uploads. So it means that you can automate some of the stuff, but you need to talk with their proprietary API. So you have an open idea API document, and then you need to have kind of a translation between the OAS file and their API gateway. Then I went to RPG Edge. Uh, and again, I didn't get what open API version they support. It's not clearly specified. And I'm quite sure it's the 2.0, I think. That's what I was able to grasp. They don't have any documented extension. And they have a project upload API. So it means that I can upload the open API document programmatically to the platform, but uh, the information that are being extracted is limited. If you want to make a complete solution, you need to actually, oh, I don't have the, the point, but basically you need to create a zip file with the open API document inside and a set of side proprietary files uh, that are fulfilling my use case. And all right, that's the commercial solution. Then I said, maybe the open source world is better but unfortunately, I haven't been able to find anything uh, so far. Like Express Gateway, that is the one I wrote. Uh, it's not supporting this thing. Uh, I've been checking Kong also. And um, there is a very old open issue there that they want to support such a thing, but I haven't been able to find any progress on that. And I also check it out thick. I know the guys are here. And as far as I check it out, there is no support on that. Uh, again, if I'm wrong on those, shut it out. It's fine. Uh, I'm more than happy to say I was wrong. But that's what I found. And uh, before I'm gonna, I, I want to show a demo of what this thing could look like, I started to ask, why nobody cares? Why nobody cares of this automation opportunity we're missing? And um, that's what I was able to, to see. So what I noticed is that more, there is a pretty big part of tooling that didn't co code up a role with OpenAPI 3.0. You know, uh, the two Xway, for example, and even RPG, 
do not support open API 3 although it has been on the market for the last six months and I was telling maybe it's difficult to implement it's a format that it's hard to you know to, to scaffold or whatever it is or maybe open API 3 is not used by anybody in the audience as a user that is not worth the effort but I don't think it's the case if not I think maybe uh, AWS will not will not do that at all or maybe open API 2 is good enough like it's doing what I need it is doing what I need and I don't want to move further and the second thing we also noticed is that it, it is clear to me, that's the sad thing that I noticed, that open API is a byproduct of an API gateway. It's not a first class citizen. Like we have it, it's a check mark. You can, you can do something, I'm gonna generate a file that you can even download and store it on your computer, but it's gonna be useless. And again, I think there is a, there is a huge gap in this regard. Uh, again, maybe they, they just don't care. Um, or maybe it's not the right tool for the job, or maybe you know, open API documents are not good enough to describe all the aspects of an API. Just to give you an example I was thinking of, how do I say in an open API document that this API support course? As far as I know, yeah, uh, well, yeah, you can't, there is no way. You, you, you might want to use proprietary extension, but then what's the purpose of that? Like, why would you do that? I'm not gonna support that. And maybe, maybe we, should, we should rethink a little bit the open API the open API specification, specification. And I actually invite you, tomorrow there is, there is an open panel, and if you're feeling the same kind of, not pain, but problem that I'm seeing here, maybe you should go there and ask questions. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that because I'm gonna be part of the panel itself, and one of the thing is, what's up? What are you gonna do here? Uh, because I personally need that, but I feel the whole DevOps world want, wants, wants such a thing. And uh, again, let's try the code, but, Again, forward, I don't think it's gonna work. I wanna be super clear. But what's the idea? Um, again, fortunately, I'm an author of an API gateway, so I, I can play a little bit here. Um, so what I did, uh, I'm gonna go on Glitch. I don't know if you guys know Glitch, but it's, uh, it's, a, plat it's a free platform. Um, it's a free platform run by Anvil, which was the founder of Fog Creek with the Stack Overflow and all the good stuff around. And they basically host are hosting for free on limited budget, but uh, Node.js application. And given that EG Express Gateway is a Node.js application, I said, okay, let's make it a test here. And I do have a super simple API gateway, which is not doing nothing more than proxy requests to a backend server. So uh, the, if I open here, here and I do cool HTTPS EG pet store dot glitch dot uh, maybe it's not, uh, it's not me, maybe. Okay, it's returning an empty array because the server doesn't have any data into. And, and you can see it's public, like if I do it here, it's, there is no authentication, the, the API is public. But then let's say that, and you know, I'm gonna be using the company I work for, but I have designed my API into a platform which is holding the whole references of my, my API and all the documents that are needed. And again, I wanna open up this API to the public, but I want to do that declaratively. So I want to modify my current open API specification and you know, I want that all the infrastructure that is linked can be automatically um, updated. So what I'm gonna do, for example, you know, I have this thing, uh, I'm gonna go on the design and say, where is that? Uh, yeah, get, this thing is not public anymore, you're gonna have to have a key. I'm gonna do that for, for all of those. And I'm gonna save the document. Now the document has been saved and that has been triggered a CI CD uh, mechanism, which uh, we are, uh, what is, yeah. Oh, that's even the wrong command. It's git browse, which is hitting over the repository. Um, uh, should be here. I'm using Cisco CI because they have a great free plan. Um, <laughs> and uh, the Cisco CI hasn't been triggered. Uh, so I'm gonna be doing that by hand, but let's pretend it happened automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it's checking out my code first. 
and it's downloading all the stuff. I don't know if that's because of the internet or not, but. Come on, boy. Yeah, it's starting the server, and then it's making the contract testing to verify that the API is still behaving in the way it should. The tests have passed, and now there is a deploy step that it is installing again the dependencies, but then it's saying, okay, the open, it's gonna check the open API specification for changes and apply those changes to the API gateway. If, yeah, it's cloning the thing and, you know, it's telling, oh, I found that you changed the authentication thing. And given that the tests were passing internally, I'm gonna proceed and make this change. So in theory, this thing has been done. And if I do uh, logs, yeah, hot reloading, maybe that work at this time. And I'm gonna do refresh just to make sure. Uh, it did not. Oh yeah, it did. So if I try again, I think that's gonna stop me this time because again, the open API has been checked. That's a super simple example, but imagine for example that you can modify the JSON schema and you know, you modify your open API document and the API gateway will react to those changes allowing a different payload. That's another, yet, yet another use case or redirects and all the use cases I'm, I'm seeing there. So to summarize it is that I think there is a missing automation opportunity here uh, that, you know, uh, that are, we don't have a bridge from the open API document to the runtime in a way that it's, uh, it is easy to use and doesn't require any manual step. And uh, again, I'm gonna leave you again the my contact here, because if you're feeling your, the same pain I am having here, I encourage you to write me, because I wanna know the, what is the problem, if I am doing everything wrong, because maybe my use case is stupid and doesn't make any sense, I wanna know that. But if you are on the same page, um, I would like to hear from you. That's all I have, and I'll be happy to answer any questions here.